Okay, so we're talking about the bell curve again. We're doing normal distribution problems. These are problems that um, deal with phenomena that has a bell-shaped distribution. So the example we're working with here is female heights. We're going to say female heights are normally distributed, therefore the heights fall along a bell curve. And we're going to say that the average height for women is 64 inches tall, or about 5 foot 4, and the standard deviation is 2.5. And what I'm going to do in this video is look at a different kind of problem than we've done in the past with the bell curve. In the past, we did problems like, you know, find the probability a woman is taller than 69 inches. In those problems, we're looking for a probability. Find the probability the woman is taller than 69 inches. In the problems we're going to work with in this video, we're not doing that. We're going to be doing something in reverse of that. So what we're actually going to do is say, you know, something like, how tall does a woman have to be so that she's taller than, let's say, 95% of the female population? So let's think about what's different about this question that I just asked. I'm not saying find the probability of anything, am I? I'm saying how tall does a woman have to be to be taller than 95% of the population of women? So I'm looking for a height, right? How tall does she have to be? And I want to know how tall she would have to be so that she's taller than nearly all the women, 95% of the women. So let's first, to think about this problem, let's first figure out what side of the curve the woman would be on. A woman who's taller than 95% of the population of females, would she be on this side of the curve or this side of the curve? Well, I think she would be on this side of the curve because 64 represents where the average women sit, right? If you're below this point, you're below average, you're short, basically. If you're above this, you're tall. And a woman who's going to be taller than 95% of the female population, she's got to be on this side. So I'm going to say that maybe her score or height would be somewhere around there on the curve. And so, in other words, I'm trying to figure out what height corresponds to this location. That's my goal in this problem. This is sort of my question mark, right? What's the height going to be that corresponds to this location? A location where only 5% of all the females in the world would be taller than this person. Whatever height this is, only 5% of the heights for women would be higher than that. Now, let's think about this for a second. If I know that this is 5%, can you tell me how much area is from here all the way over? I think you can. I think you would say this is 95%. In fact, this location would have to be P95, which corresponds to the 95th percentile. The 95th percentile. That's because 95% of all the women's heights are below that point. And in fact, since this part of the curve from the zero here all the way over is 50% of the area on the bell curve. I also know that from this particular line to the center is 45%. I know that has to be true because together 45 and 5 makes 50 and that's half the curve. And then I could write that as a decimal as 0.4500. Now why do I care about that particular area? Well it turns out that we have a z-score chart, right? a normal probability table that associates z-scores, right, with areas. So there's a connection between this area and whatever that z-score is. If I want to know what z-score is located here, if I'm trying to figure that out, I've got to look up 4500 on the z-chart or the z-table so that I can figure out the corresponding z-score. On that z-table, every z-score is associated with an area. We know that already because that's how we use the z-table in the past. But we also should realize, of course, that every area is associated with a z-score. That has to also be true, right? So if I looked up 4500, I would find the associated z-score. And if I knew that z-score, it should be a simple step to get from that score to a height because I know there's a formula that connects z-scores and x-values. That formula that we used to use was this formula. Z is equal to X minus the mean over sigma. For example, if I knew that that height was 69, I would plug 69 in for X, I'd subtract off 64, I would divide by 2.5, and, and I would come up with my corresponding Z-score. So I know that there's this connection between the Z-score and the height, and the connection exists through this formula. So here's basically our approach to this problem. Here's what we're going to be doing. We're going to be saying, We'll be given an area, or it'll be implied by the problem, and we will determine what that area is. And from that area, we will move over, using the table, we will figure out the z-score. 
So we will go from an area to the z-score, and we'll do that using the table. That will be the vehicle to get from area to the z-score. We're going to look up the area in the table and find the corresponding z-score. And once we have the z-score, the next step is going to be to go from that z-score to a height. That height will be x. And how will we get from z-score to height? We're going to use a formula. And if you think about it, this is exactly opposite to what we used to do when we used the bell curve. So we used to go from a height, like 69 inches, for example, and we would convert that to a z-score. And remember, we would use this formula. z is equal to x minus the mean over sigma. So we would go from x to a z-score by using this formula and these given values, right? And then once we had the z-score, we'd look up the z-score on the table and get the area. And then we would finish. We'd say the probability is whatever, right? But now we're given the area to start. You know, I want to find the height that corresponds to a woman who's taller than 95% of the female population. From that information, that 95%, we determine the area. Once we have the area, we look that area up on the table and get the corresponding z-score. Once we have the z-score, we use the formula here to solve for x. So what I know is we're going to do is we're going to take this formula and we're going to solve it for x so that we know what x will be at the end. Let's do that quickly. Let's solve this formula for x. So it no longer says z equals, but rather it will say x equals. To do that, I'm going to multiply both sides by sigma. And if I do that, sigma here and sigma here cancel out. And then z times sigma, of course, is z sigma. And that'll be equal to x minus the mean. I'm just going to switch this around here. So I'm going to say x minus the mean is equal to z sigma. Now my x is on the right-hand side. If I add the mean here, and I add it to here, right? I have to add it over here because these are not like terms. Can't add them together. And these two will cancel out. I'll end up with x equals to z sigma plus the mean. And there it is. I now have my formula. Now once I have this formula, I can then say, well, now I know how I'll get from z to x. It'll be this formula. x is equal to z sigma plus the mean. All right. Now, that's the logic of the problem. That's the approach we're going to use. To just you know, fill in some numbers, we're not going to go to the table. We're not going to look up 4,500 and get the corresponding z-score, because we'll do that in the practice problems. But I happen to know that z-score, because we work with these numbers so often in class. So I'm just going to go ahead and tell you what z-score you would find if you looked that up. So if you should look up 4,500 on the z-score, the I mean, like z-table, the number you will come up with is 1.645. 1.645. That's the associated z-score with this area. Now, once you've done that, then the next step is going to be to take that z-score and plug it into this formula, right? Because we would have gone at this point from the area to the z-score. And now from the z-score to the x value, we use that formula. And let's plug that in and see what we get here. We would have x is equal to z, which is 1.645, times sigma. Sigma is 2.5, plus the mean, which is 64. And if you actually do that, just so we have an answer to this problem, if you actually plug all that in, 1.645 times 2.5 plus 64, we end up with the answer 68.1 inches, essentially. 68.1. Or about 5 foot 8, in other words. So a woman has to be, if these numbers are true, in fact, a woman has to be about 5 foot 8 to be taller than 95% of the female population.